Hey guys, it's May May, and today I'm making the sample cards for the release video that you would have seen yesterday. And I thought since I was making three, I would just go ahead and film the process and bring you guys along because you typically always want to see um, the cards or how I made them. So here we go. I have some ideas. Um, I've actually come up with three different ideas that I want to do and three different parts that I want to showcase. When I do um, stamp club reveals, I have to show as much of the stamp set as possible. So I try to come up with ideas that use as much on the set as I can. So I know I wanna use this guy right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it up. And I probably have already messed up. I probably should have stamped this in a dye ink versus a pigment ink, because I'm probably gonna to wanna to color this, but I'll stamp it real quick and I can always come back and stamp it in another one. Sometimes it doesn't matter. If I'm super careful with my alcohol markers, I can get away with it. That's so cute. I love this, this cabinet, it's so cute. Okay, let me clean this guy. I'm going to go ahead and stamp him in my memento just in case I do want to color him. Like I said, sometimes I can color my Versafine with my alcohol marker if I'm super, super careful. But the issue is, over time, as my alcohol dries, as the alcohol ink dries, it can start to bleed. And so even though while I'm coloring it looks okay, later I can get kind of a muddy look. So let's just do this as a backup. So there we go. Two of those guys. And I used Memento today. I don't know why. I just reached for it instead of reaching for my finesse I have been reaching for. All right, so I can put this guy back onto the sheet. And I'm just cleaning in between. A little squeaky clean on my little scrubber here. Cleaning that off and putting it back. I know I'm going to be coloring this little vacuum. It is the cutest little vacuum I've ever seen. I do not like to use canister vacs in real life. I never have luck with them. I tend to sling them around. You know, not like you think you're vacuuming, but you really just have it following behind you. I have an idea for this guy for my um, card. I'm going to go ahead and stamp too. I do this a lot whenever I'm starting these projects because if I mess one up coloring it, this way I don't have to come back and stamp again. I get all my stamping done just kind of as a precaution because I am known to mess up my coloring or to pick colors I don't like and have to start over something like that. Time to do the laundry. I have been doing laundry like crazy. I feel like every time I turn around, there's more laundry to do. Now, I have a plan for this because I want to stack that laundry up really, really high. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and stamp two of these in case I mess one up. So, those are my coloring ones. And then what I want to do is I'm really only going to stamp the top portion of it. I'm not going to worry about the base. I just want the laundry because I'm going to be fussy cutting that out, the little pile of laundry. So, I'm not worried about this bottom part. I'm just going to ink up the top and stamp it a bunch of times. I don't really know how many I'm going to need. So I'm just going to run across and do it. That's probably enough. If I stack up one, two, three, four, I say I'm going to call that enough. I feel like it is. Now I've loaded the rest of the little images from the stamp set, the little dish stacks, the cups, the saucers, the pots and pans. We actually did these so that they could um, stack on top of the little counter space. And that's what I'm going to do in one of my cards so you can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp these several times. Again, so that if I mess one up, I can just color another one. So there's one set of them. I've got them kind of far apart on my block, but that's all right. This whole sheet's probably going to get used anyway. So that gets my stamping done, and now I can start coloring. So when I color, I just bring my markers over here to the side, and I just kind of pull from them as I go. One thing I like to do, I'll show you as we get going. Ah, uh, what color do I want to do this? Maybe gray. Let's see. I always kind of test my marker in the kind of blank space here. So, oh, that's a good color for the cabinet. Let's see if it is or not. So I'm going to color this one. Remember, I did that other one. I did this guy with um, VersaFine pigment ink, and I don't want to smear the ink, so I'm just going to use this one instead. And I kind of like that um, white space in the middle there, so that's kind of how I'm going to color it. I'm just going to flake this out, or flake or flick. Flick is the name. <laughs> I'll flick this color out. I want this to feel a little less than perfect. On the cabinet itself, in between the drawers and the doors, I'm going to color that little section in solid. I got to tell you, I think what I will really love to do with this set is paper piece it to make the cabinets to kind of, if you've never done paper piecing, that's one of my favorite things to do. And to make the cabinets have like different patterns, you know, to paper piece it maybe on some wood grain paper or something like that, or even just some kind of retro 1950s paper would be really cute to do that with. 
I think that'd be adorable. Now for the knobs and the pulls, I'm gonna color those solid as well. You have to be careful when you've just colored with the alcohol, especially if it's not dry, and you go to touch a little spot like this, I should zoom you guys in. When you go to touch a little spot like that, sometimes it can pull the ink out and bleed into the other. So barely touch the space you're coloring, and especially if you have a little wet alcohol ink around it, it will bleed if you're not careful. Not the end of the world if it does, but I kind of like this gray for the, this is what I do the whole time. Test, test, and retest. Okay, yes, I just used that one. So I'm gonna sit that one here. And then this dark gray, I might use it for the counter, the countertop. Let's see what it looks like here. And let me see what it looks like if I take my blending um, marker and just sort of work that out into the middle. I kind of like that. I'm kind of going for a broken coloring. I don't want it to look perfect. Let's go up here to the top. Yep, that's a little too splotchy. So I'm gonna find a lighter gray and try to come between the two to test this color. It's not as light as I want. Let me see if I can find another one. I could even use a pale blue. Yeah, this one's called, this is a 485. I don't see a name on this one. Let's use this one in between and see what we get. You could get so fancy. You could do marble. You could try to, you know, mimic granite. Wouldn't that be cool? I think you could do all kinds of stuff with it. I do want a little more color than that. So let's just try it. I'm good with that. I think that countertop looks good. One thing you have to be careful with your blender marker. This was not supposed to be an alcohol marker, marker test uh, class, but sometimes it can splotch up your work. You see how it kind of splotched that up? I was real heavy with it. So you want to be mindful of that. I'm not too worried about the edges that are bleeding because I'm cutting this guy out anyway. So we need a good gray for that stainless steel uh, faucet. Mine's going to be stainless steel. It's not that color. Let's go back to our darkest gray here. Four... 89 is my darkest gray. Now for the fun part, the dishes. You can have so much fun in this sink, coloring so many different colors. This is a little chopping board. I'm gonna color it brown. Obviously it could be any color. My chopping boards at home are all bright colors actually, cause they're, um, what, plastic? I don't know, they're not plastic. They're some material. <laughs> There's the dishes in the sink. I think they're cute, bright, cheery colors like that. I think like a summer, your summer dishes, if you have seasonal dishes, I do not. Let's go here. I'm anxious to color this guy. I can kind of see him done in like a red and blue. So let me pick up my two colors. There's my color. So I'm going to be using 379 and 360 on this one. And I think I'm going to let the blue be the, I don't know, I want the blue to be the accent or red to be the accent. Let's do them both ways and we'll see which one we like best. Now, red can 100% derail you. Do you see how it's bleeding out? I'm not gonna stress about it because I'm gonna cut this guy out. That might be an issue for me. If it is, I'll figure that out later. But for the most part, I'm good with that. I kind of like this one better. I like the more blue. So we'll see, we'll come back to it. Let's work on laundry.
And now to fussy cut. Now you can certainly use your skin and cut here. I have a skin and cut and sometimes I do, but this is so little to do for me. I like to fussy cut. It's a good time of relaxing and thinking. I mean, some people stress over fussy cutting and I don't. If you miss a spot or mess up a spot or leave a crooked line, it is not the end of the world. You can disguise it in so many ways. And one way, and I'm going to show you in a minute when I get to it, there's one way to make all of your fussy cutting pieces look so much better. Just wait. Also, I'll tell you, when we make these um, stamp sets, we work really hard to make the lines so easy so everybody can just fussy cut these out. Um, we try not to give you a whole bunch of like fancy um curve look i'm doing a curve curves and things you have to get into mostly we do the straight lines and even in our little um pots and pans it won't be the hardest thing to cut out so i want to show you guys something so i'm going to be stacking these on the card and i noticed when i was fussy cutting leaving that little pit little bit of laundry right there really doesn't help in your stack it just kind of looks a little off so here's what i did i just cut that little piece out and by cutting that little piece out Things look like they stack a little better. I don't know why. It just feels a little more um, like a stack without having that one little piece. It's probably overkill. <laughs> but while I'm here, I might as well cut them out. I'm also trying to decide why do I enjoy fussy cutting. This whole time, that's what I've been thinking about. Why do I enjoy this? And you know what I think it is? I used to be a hairdresser. Like, that's what I did for a living for 15 years. And I enjoyed cutting hair more than I enjoyed any other process. And I just wonder if I just like the feel of scissors in my hand. Maybe that's it. I don't know. So what I'm doing now is taking my Distress Ink. This is Vintage Photo, which is my very favorite Distress Ink. And I am inking the edges of my fussy cut pieces. I'm going to tell you something. It changes the whole deal. Let me show you this. Can you see? It's probably hard to see, but can you see the white edges at the top of this laundry pile? Watch what happens when I ink it with my Distress Ink. All those edges obviously disappear and it makes it look so clean and neat. And you know, a lot of times I used to take the black marker and go around the edges and try to clean that up. But I found many times when I was alcohol marker coloring that if I use like a Sharpie or something, it might bleed into my project. And this doesn't bleed in. And bonus, if I do it right, if I do it a little heavy, it also gives me another layer of dimension to my little fussy cut piece. So this is how I've been cleaning up the edges of my fussy cut pieces. It does not change the look to me at all. It doesn't mean that I have to do this project very distressed or very grungy. It doesn't do that. It just cleans up the edges of your fussy cutting when it's not perfect. I don't do perfect fussy cutting, y'all. It just doesn't happen. And it doesn't hurt my feelings. Not a single person is going to look at my project and go, hmm, your fussy cutting's a little off. <laughs> well, if they do, oh well. Okay, so now I need to plan out my projects. I'll be right back. So now to do the laundry card. I think that'll be the quickest and the, and the cute, not the cutest, but the quickest. So I have a piece of lime green um, gingham. <laughs> You know, I want to say it's a solid green. It's lime green gingham. And I cut it four by five and a quarter. And then this piece is, I don't remember what I cut it to. So let me tell you really quick. Get my ruler. This piece is four and a quarter by three. And I'm going to lay that one on top here. And then this last piece, look, it's some that I didn't use from the coloring. So I just used the other side of it. This piece is three and three fourths by two and a half, and that piece will lay on there. I wanted the purple to feel like a frame, but I didn't want to cut out a frame, so I just did it like this to be a mat, and I think this will be cute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble the laundry basket first. So this guy is gonna go on top of here, and I think I'm gonna pop him up on foam, so let's do that. So I'm just gonna center him on top of this piece, try to get the same amount of frame all the way around. Pretty good, all right, and then this guy, I'm going to glue. I can't decide if I need to glue this one down first or if I want to start the laundry. So I want this guy to live down here and I want the laundry to go off the frame. That's kind of my plan here. So I'm going to do just a quick little run through. I also discovered in my layout that I like some of the laundry to go behind and then some of it to go in the front like so. So I'm going to lay one piece behind and one piece to the front and alternate them. Um, it also is a good way for me to lay my colors out like I like them. So let me just do a little test run here. Yep. And then I want one more piece that goes above the frame. I want it to look like a huge stack of laundry on the card, if that makes sense. And this guy I'm gonna put behind. 
So that's how I'm gonna glue it down. I'm just trying to decide if I just start from the top. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna glue our basket down and leave the top loose. So I'm just gonna glue the bottom of my basket. So I'm gonna put glue down here, just leaving that top part so I can slide laundry under it. So glue here and I'm gonna place this guy down, leaving the top lifted a little. And then I'm gonna grab this little guy. I'm gonna glue him straight down underneath that first one. You could use your tweezers here or you might wanna use your, um, well, I lost it, quick stick. <laughs> It's like, what is the other thing? Your quick stick. You could use that there as well. All right, let's try this little guy on top. And because I want him to be on top, I'm leaving the top edge loose on it as well so I can slide one underneath. So I'll slide this one under. And then this guy is going to go behind that one. So we're going to have a huge stack of laundry. Just what I was looking for. Okay, so there's our laundry. Now I want to put the sentiment here. I was going to stamp it straight on here, but I think it'd be cute to put it on like a little banner or something coming across here. So I think I'm gonna stamp it onto a separate piece and then put it on. So I made a mistake. This happens a lot to me. <laughs> I get ahead of the game and I forget to do my sentiments and my stamping. So I'm gonna attempt to stamp this. If it doesn't go well, I can cover it up. But I think I might can get the stamping done on here. This little sentiment says, friends like you make life loads more fun. I'm going to attempt I don't think this is going to work. I can just tell you right now, I'm feeling that's not going to work. Nope, it did not. So I need to fix it. So how am I going to fix it, you say? I took the white piece off. And what I'm going to do is cut this guy off of here. Um, remember how I told you you could stack it before you put it on? I could have done that and probably saved myself this whole headache. But I get ahead of myself. And you guys always tell me, leave your mistakes in so we can see. And this is one. I just got ahead of myself. So I'm just going to cut this little stack away. And then I'll be able to use it again. I'll just have to replace this white paper. So there's one half. Oh, he's cute like that too. All right, and let's do this one. Think ahead if you can. I, I don't know. I'm the worst about thinking ahead on these things. I just go, oh, I'm excited. I want to get this done. And then I just don't do the best job of thinking before I get going. So now before I forget, I will do my stamping. <laughs> I could edit all that out, but I'm not going to. I want you to see things happen. And I've been making cards for a long time and I still do that, especially when I'm on a time crunch. Sometimes I'll get myself in a mess by doing things kind of in a hurry. All right, I'm gonna stamp this kind of to the bottom corner of this little piece. Too cute. Okay, now we'll glue our little piece on to here, like so. We could even pop it up at this point since we made it one piece. Okay, and then this guy gets popped up again onto here. You're probably wondering, where is Scotty? Well, to be honest with you, I have this, I have like two sheets of this foam that I want to use up. So I'm trying to just use it up as I go before I get back into Scotty. Okay, and then we want to center this guy on our purple. There we go. Then he goes onto the green. I think this is cute. And then this goes onto our card. Now, I think this card needs a little stitching. I haven't done stitching in a while. But I think since it's laundry themed, I'm going to do some stitching here. I'm using my little fine, fine point. This is the 0.25. I thought about using the other one, but then I thought this card may not need the chunkiness. So that is card number one. And I think it's super cute, even with my mistakes. Super, super cute. I even thought about putting some white pen in the laundry. I don't know why. I just want to bring some of the white into it. So I think I'm just going to take my white pen. Let's warm it up a little bit. Oh, we're good. I think I'm just going to come in here and make some little stitch lines in here just periodically and bring some of the white into the piles of laundry. Yeah, the white really makes a difference. Sometimes if something feels a little flat, you can add a little white to make it pop. So look how cute that is. All right, now I'm gonna do the inside of the card. So I'm just gonna do a simple sentiment. This sentiment says, here's to um, making this card for you and letting chores wait. I think it's super cute. I think I'm gonna stamp it down here in this bottom corner. Sometimes I like to do that with my sentiments and then right above it. So here's to making this card for you and letting chores wait. Too cute. So there is one sample done there. Let's go to the next one. So my next sample is going to be a tag. And I want to show you what I did to kind of create this section I'm going to use in a second. So for the little vacuum, I want it to look like it is vacuumed a section um, of the mess up, a portion of the mess up. So here's what I did. I want to make a white strip so it looks like it just ran through and picked up all the 
confetti I'm going to have on the card. So what I did was I laid my little vacuum down and I made some little marks where the little vacuum head is. Then I just took my scissors. I took my long scissors because it's easier. And I just made a stripe meeting one of those dots and came the other way and made a stripe reaching the other. Now, I did not do this in perspective. You know, I didn't make it grow toward the end. You could, but I didn't because I want, I don't want it to look like a light ray. I want it to look like a strip of the carpet that this vacuum cleaned up. And then I just laid this here and matched it up. And I was a little bit wide on the ends, not wide, but a little bit, these points kind of show. So I just rounded off one edge. I think I'll round off both of these. And that way, when I glue this down, it'll glue perfectly like that. And it'll look like I vacuumed up a little strip of the um, project or the carpet. So I'm going to make a tag this time. Let me do this. I'm going to punch some holes in this guy or punch the angles. So I'm going to use the large angle punch here to make my tag, to get my tag started. And then I cut a piece that is the same width as my tag, which is two and three quarters. And then this piece is two and one quarter. And see how it just kind of looks messy, like like somebody spilled sprinkles on the carpet? That's kind of what I wanted. So I'm going to glue this one straight down. Oh, yes, I'll glue it straight down, and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment so we don't mess up. I'm going to, we, like, y'all like, don't blame me. You're the one messing up. <laughs> so I'm going to glue this guy down. The only thing I don't like is that the white here is not exactly the same white. It'll be okay. You'll get the point that it's not exactly the same white. Then this little vacuum cleaner is going to sit right here, just like this. And then I'm going to pick out my sentiment. The sentiment I like is the one that says, um, craft now, chores later. I thought it'd be cute to do this. And then like, this might be a present you've made for somebody where you said, I'm stopping, I'm stopping chores to make this present for you. So I'm just going to... I know that's where my little vacuum is going to live, so I'm going to go ahead and do this like this. Stamp that down. Give it time to let the ink transfer. Cute as it can be. Craft now, chores later. And then I can place this guy. And see, I want it to like it just sucked up all of the, um, all of the little trash there. I have a spot on this piece that I don't like. It makes my vacuum look like it doesn't know what it's doing. So I'm going to turn this around and switch it. So I need to do a, a different angle cut here. There we go. So I'm going to glue that in that area and then put my little vacuum down on it. Reminds me of one of those like vacuum infomercials where for some reason their vacuum always picks up the perfect amount, you know, and mine at home doesn't. Their vacuum always cleans the spot like there was nothing ever there. Okay, so let's put this guy down here. Let's line this angle up here. I'll trim off the bottom in a second. Put that down there. Trim this little piece off. And then I think I'll pop him up on a little bit of foam. Look how quick and easy that one is. That is cute. Doesn't it look like that little vacuum just cleaned up all that mess? That's adorable. Okay, let me poke a hole in the top of this one. So I'm going to use my crocodile for that. Just put a hole about right there. And I think to dress this guy up even more, I am going to distress ink the edges. I think it'll really make everything pop. It's funny how I go through phases with this. Like sometimes I... There was a time when I distress inked everything, and then I just kind of stopped, and now I've just kind of picked it back up again. It just makes such a difference. See how one side, it just changes the look and feel? It just makes everything glow. So many times you guys say to me in your comments, how can I make my card projects look more professional? How can I make them look like what I see on Instagram and things like that? A lot of the times, it's that little bitty step right there. Just a little bit of ink around the edges. It just changes things. It, it just does something where people might go, hmm, I wonder how you got that color on the edge. But we know how we did it. That's adorable. I love that one. <laughs> Let me put some ribbon on it. So I'm going to run some um, black ribbon through here, just like so. I wanted to use my bead threader, but I cannot find it. I think it has been borrowed. <laughs> so I had the dental threaders on my desk, so I just went to them, but I love my bead threader. Oh, well. Okay, so there's that. I love the black on there. My mom always told me, if you want to elegant something up, <laughs> it's not how she said it. If you want to add a touch of elegance, then add some black. So I'm going to do that, but I think I'm going to add this as my um, tie to give a little color here. So just pull this guy around and make a bow. So that is going to be my second sample, my little vacuum cleaning up the area. I love that. <laughs> That's so cute. All right, on to the last sample. So now it's time for our last sample, and it's the most simple one that I'm doing. Remember how I told you I cut the faucet off of here? Let me show you what I'm going to do to remedy that. So I'm going to open up 
my little card project here, my card base. And I'm going to use my Memento ink again. And this time, I'm going to ink up, probably not over my card base, I'm going to ink up only the faucet. Just a little faucet of our little stamp there. And what I'm going to do is using the stamp to help me decide, decide where it's going to go. I'm just going to sit that like that on my card and just ink up that faucet. This is a lot like you do when you paper piece. Don't worry about those extra pieces being there or those extra little uh, marks that's going to all get covered up. A lot like when you paper piece, you'll go ahead and stamp the image and then put your little paper pieces down. This way, I won't have to uh, try to cut out that little faucet, which would be really hard to do. So it looks like I got that a little over where I want it. So I'm going to take my white pen and I'm going to cover this up just right there. And that will hide that even more for me. No one has to be this picky. No one. I don't know why I'm being this picky, but I am. Okay, so here we go. Now we can glue this little guy down. All right, I'm going to line up the faucet. Then I'm going to turn the card and make sure I get pretty straight. Now all I need to do is color that little faucet in. I'm going to be super careful with it. And then my extra little pots and pans. I'm going to put them onto the counter so they stick like this. I have a set there. And then I'll have some over here. Maybe switch them so the little... Pan handle goes out that way, and then put these over here. That is so cute. Look at that stack of dishes on that counter that needs to be done. Ugh, who does that give anxiety to? I know there's somebody out there watching today that has anxiety over that many dishes. Okay, let me pop these guys up as well. I think they'll be cute popped up. So at my mother's house, there are never dishes in her sink. Never, ever, ever. They take care of dishes like instantly. They are always taken care of right away. And I'm the worst. I, I don't know. I just let dishes ride. I usually try to do them either at night or in the morning before I leave um, home because I do like to come home to a clean stack of dishes in the dishwasher. But there you go. All right. So there's our little um, sink. And then underneath it, we're going to do our sentiment. So I have this little sentiment that I'm going to stamp right here in the middle. It says laundry piled high, dishes stacked to the sky. All I wanted to do was make this for you. So that's what that says there. And then on the inside, flip that over like that. I love this sentiment. This one for the inside says, I was cleaning, started daydreaming, thinking what a good friend you've been. The trick with these fine line sentiments is don't press. Just put it there and let the ink transfer. And you get a really pretty fine line sentiment like that. I just loved that. The font. I thought this font was so cleany. You know what I'm saying? Like so loose and so um, what I was feeling at the time. All right. So here we go. I'm going to close that one down again. So laundry piled high, dishes stacked to the sky. All I wanted to do was make this for you. And then I was cleaning, started daydreaming, thinking what a good friend you've been. And you can even use other sentiments and keep going. Like you could add um, craft now, chores later, or you could add um, friends like you make life more, loads more fun. Um, and then there's one more sentiment, loving you is never a chore. All right, so there, that is how I made my three samples. Let me pull them back up. So there you go. The three samples from our stamp set. I love this stamp set. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And I hope that gives you a little inspiration for your card making. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.